Okay, a few more examples of graphing the area under a function, and then I'll make a few comments. In each of these cases, we are graphing the area under function f. So what we're doing is imagining a vertical line, like that right there, and imagine that line moving to the right. And as it moves to the right, it sweeps out some area under the graph. And so at any point x, there's a certain amount of area that has been swept out up to that point, and that value of a changes as x changes. So that value of a is a function of x that can be graphed. Okay, so here we go. x in this case is moving to the right, and you can see that the area under the graph is increasing rapidly at first because the value of f is high. And then as x gets further to the right, the increase in a becomes less. And then right at this point, at that x value, the increase in the area reaches zero. So my area graph starts at zero because when x is zero, no area has been swept out. It's increasing rapidly at first and then less rapidly and is increasing at a rate of zero at this x value. And if, the, if we continue to the right, you can see past, once we get past this point, the area starts to increase again, very slowly at first, because the value of f is very low, but then faster and faster as we move further to the right. So my a graph starts to increase like that. It's, it has a slope of zero right there just for one instant. And it turns out this is a cubic. If my original function here was parabolic, this one is cubic. Okay, let's look at the next one. Imagine a line there and it's moving to the right. At the beginning, the area swept out is zero, but it's growing fairly rapidly as we march along to the right. But that growth rate decreases as the value of f decreases. And at this x value, it's no longer growing. So my, my a graph is no longer increasing. Right there, at that point, it has a slope of zero. Now, if I continue beyond that point, through here, I'm getting some area, but it's down there below the axis. We consider that negative area. As we accumulate negative area, my value for A goes back down. And it's not going down very fast. It's going down fastest right, right at this X value, where the graph is the most negative and then it's not going down at all right there at that point. So this graph at this x value over here has leveled off again. And then as we continue to the right, we accumulate more area at an increasing rate again. And once again, this will be a cubic if this is a parabola. Okay, now the third one here. Again, we imagine a vertical line here moving to the right. At the beginning, no area has been accumulated, so we graph a value of zero. As we move to the right, we start accumulating area, and it's very rapid at first and slows down, but it never goes all the way to zero. As we continue to the right, we're accumulating area. We're just not accumulating area as fast in this region where the value of f is low. So my, my area is getting bigger quickly, and it slows down. And at this x value, it's accumulating at a minimum rate, but it's not zero. And then it increases again. So this graph still has a positive slope right there at that point. Because this graph has a positive value at that point. So there we have it. Now you probably recognize that these three graphs up top are three parabolas, and these are the three possible parabolas that one may have. You may have a parabola like this one that touches the axis at one point, and the corresponding area graph has a plateau on it. Or you can have a parabola that has two zeros, and the corresponding area graph down here has a maximum and a minimum. Or you can have an area graph that doesn't cross the axis at all, and there we have uh, a cubic curve that has no local max or local min. It just has a little wobble in it there. Now, what we've done is graph 
uh, area functions for given functions of f. And in each case, as x increases, the area swept out under the graph up to that point x can be graphed. And this is the main idea in second semester calculus. Calculus, as it's commonly taught, is split up into two semesters, with differential calculus being first semester and integral calculus being second semester. And calculus conceptually really does exist, at least introductory college calculus really does exist in those two parts, uh, differential calculus and integ integral calculus. And the main concept in differential calculus is the slope of a line, or the, the slope of a function. And the fact that, that that slope has a value at any point, so that slope itself can be graphed as a function of f, and that's the derivative. Second semester calculus is this. The area under a function can be graphed. It, the area swept out up to any point x can be graphed. Now, look at this. You might notice that in each of these cases, my area function is the antiderivative of my given function. Okay, think about this. Look at this first case over here. This is a cubic. If you were given a graph of a cubic like this, what would its derivative look like? This graph has a positive slope and then a zero slope just for an instance, just for an instant, and then a positive slope. So the derivative of this curve would have to be positive and then zero and then positive again. In fact, it would look like that. So this area graph, it turns out, is the antiderivative of my function. Look at this next one. The slope here is positive and then zero and then negative and then zero again and then positive. So if I were to graph the derivative of that, it would have to have a value that was positive and then zero and then negative and then zero and then positive. And that function is right there. Positive, zero, negative, zero, positive. And you know that if you have a cubic, it has a derivative that is a parabola. So my area function down here is the antiderivative of my function f. And the same thing happens over here. Here, down here, I have a cubic. If I take the derivative of this graph, notice that it has a, a positive slope, and then a still a positive slope, but not quite as big, and then a positive slope again. It's getting bigger. So my derivative of, of this curve will have to be a large value, and then a smaller value, and then a larger value again, but positive the whole time. And that's what this function is right here. In every case, my original function is the derivative of the area function. Or another way to say it is the area function is the antiderivative of the original function. If we go back and glance at the examples we were doing earlier, let's look at that page again. The same thing is true there. This is easy. What does the derivative of this look like? It's that. Or how about this? What's the derivative of that graph? You should very quickly recognize it's that. What's the derivative of a parabola? A straight line. In every case, the area function is the antiderivative of the original function.